I despise the word gatekeeping. I despise it because it's such an abstract concept that doesn't really mean anything concrete. The idea of gatekeeping is that you, as a consumer of a certain product, are preventing other people from consuming the product through specific arbitrary reasons. I find that idea ridiculous. There's no way for us to control who enjoys or even merely consumes what kind of entertainment that exists within this realm of reality, so long as those entertainment are made available for public consumption. We can suggest them and tell them not to consume them, but suggesting and telling people to not consume a media is not the same as having control of that particular metaphorical gate and shutting it down so that they cannot enter. You telling people that they should shouldn't enter a fandom is about as effective as you closing this gate. Yeah, that works very well. Recently, there was a bit of a hoopla being started by Mother's Basement telling people that JoJo watch order doesn't really matter as long as you enjoy them and anyone who says that you should watch them chronologically is a gatekeeper to the medium. That's not gatekeeping, that's the no true Scotsman fallacy and they're about as effective in convincing people to not consume media as anti-piracy laws convincing people to not pirate. Incidentally, Japan, no, it's not going to work no matter how many kiss animes that you're going to shut down. No wonder why the anime animation companies went straight to YouTube. My point is, this standard of what makes a fan a real fan or a fake fan is an arbitrary standard made by people on the internet. If some moron on the internet stops you from enjoying the show because they consider you not the real fan, they're not the moron you are, and I'm kinda doubting if you're actually enjoying the show in the first place. And ironically, I'm speaking this as someone who skips straight to part 4 from part 2 because I thought the first season of part 3 was unbearably boring, and the only way I could finish it is if I watch it with my hardcore JoJo fan brother. If you're gonna tell me that I'm not a real JoJo fan because of that, Good, because I'm not. Screw you. I'm not gonna desperately try to convince people on the internet that I am a real fan, nor will I convince them that my way of watching JoJo is the absolute 100% correct one. And even if I'm trying to tell people that my way of viewing is the 100% correct one, they can tell me to go screw myself. The point that I'm trying to make is that gatekeeping in its current fan-focused definition is not actual gatekeeping. It's just people on the internet telling others that they're not a real fan. That's gatekeeping in the same way that advertisement is a threat to your life if you don't buy the product. If there's an ad that tells you that you're a loser for not buying the product, actually that's every ad, does that make you a loser? Same thing with gatekeeping. Just because you tell people that they should get off of certain fandoms doesn't mean that they will. Telling people that they're not a true fan for enjoying a show in a way that they wanted is not gatekeeping. Criticism of your methods of enjoying the show is not gatekeeping. Harassment, bullying, and telling people that they're a terrible person for enjoying the show in a way that they enjoyed them is gatekeeping. It's emotional manipulation and torment to make sure that you're traumatized in associating yourself with the fandom. When I say harassment and bullying, I mean legit harassment and bullying. In the end, you're only making yourself look bad and the fandom look worse. If it's not the obnoxious purity test, it's the actually harmful things that will make people to look at your fandom and think that it's toxic. Now sure, there are some people in certain fandoms whose main goal is to completely ruin the thing that makes the fandom exist to begin with. For example, they might get outraged towards fighting games that have good looking and appealing women. I mean, how dare they make fighting games to have good looking women? They might get outraged to anime having women with big stacks. I mean, how dare women are short and have big stacks? Those kinds of people shouldn't be in the fandom. And yet here we are. This has been a thing for years now. These people complain about the same thing and as I said many times before, these things usually happen when certain things become mainstream. The outrage towards Uzaki-chan, the short stack anime girl, wouldn't have happened if the anime didn't get published on Funimation. A lot of the hot takes about Avatar The Last Airbender are popping left and right ever since its inception on Netflix. The Persona hot takes wouldn't have existed if the series isn't the most popular JRPG in existence. So please tell me. How are we going to stop these people from coming into these fandoms when these big publishers are constantly telling others that the thing that we like exists and that these people may consume it? The reason why I hate gatekeeping as a concept is because that implies that we as fans have control over the kinds of people that consume these entertainment media. We don't. The ones who do are the developers and the publishers of these entertainment media. In fact, they might even play a big role in how we can truly gatekeep this industry from these really bad and toxic people. 
We'll get to that later. First off, I want to dive into this concept of gatekeeping a bit further, just to explain to you why I despise it, or at least in its current modern understanding. The metaphorical gate blocks the entrance between people who consume the media and people who don't consume the media. There are many ways for you to close this metaphorical gate. Maybe the media is so complicating that it's not that easy to digest or where to start with. And yes, that includes Jojo apparently because there are legit some people who think that the series is too complex. So complex that they need a specific order to really enjoy them. Maybe the people who are not consuming the media are simply not interested in the media itself. Maybe the people who are not consuming the media don't even know that the media exists in the first place. They might have been living in a cave or something. Actually, that's not really you closing the gate. That's more like people choosing not to open the gate. The reality is, the gate isn't closed. No one locks this gate. No one keeps this gate from being opened by these people, and we cannot keep the gate from not being open. And this is if we're talking about specific entertainment media fandoms. If we're talking about the fandom in general, like the anime fandom in general, who boy, in current year, that gate is more open than a journalist's relationship status. I've been in this hoopla for a while now. For many years, I have tried to convince these people that if you don't like the media that is centered on exposing the most pleasing of human organs, do not consume those media. If you don't like games that feature women that are appealing to straight men or non-straight women, then don't play them. If you don't like media that offends you, don't consume them. I've been in social media saying these things many times to these people, and yet they keep coming back, introducing new hooplas after hooplas to the point where it gets super tiresome, like the filler villains in part 3 season 1. Now. I find it very funny that the same people who harass and bully others to people that they don't like are the same people that say that they are against harassment and bullying and gatekeeping. They want to keep the fandom more inclusive and accepting to everyone, but in doing so, they exclude people that they think is toxic for the fandom. It's the fakest form of inclusivity that you can think of, one that is only designed to sound good rather than actually perform good. This meme illustrates my point perfectly, and incidentally, it also illustrates my previous point in how there is no way for you people to gatekeep these people and prevent them from entering in. So long as these people have the knowledge that your fictional entertainment exists, they can enter anytime they want. I saw an edited version where the people inside the place straight up torch these people that want to be included, unless if we're talking about literally torching these people, how are you going to do that when the gate is about as securely placed as this gate over here? How are you going to fortify this defense and make sure that people don't get in? Don't worry, ladies and gentlemen, I have a solution. And that solution goes beyond just telling people, hey, stop watching the show or hey, stop playing this game. It's very simple, really. Considering that these people get offended by the smallest of things like short stack anime girls, just keep on making that. Just keep on making the things that these people get offended by. You just need to be as crazy as these people in making these things. And thankfully, that's not a very hard thing to do because a lot, and I mean a lot of people, enjoy the things that these moral police got offended by every day. Keep on making things that they can get offended by. It's pretty much the absolute best way for you to make these people feel that they are not accepted and included in this entertainment industry. I mean, there are articles talking about how women in video games that are made to be appealing to men made them to feel excluded. Good! You're not the target demographic. You are supposed to be excluded. It's the same thing as how straight men are supposed to feel excluded when they watch animes that feature attractive boys. Although Oran is still a good anime to watch even if you're a guy. But even so, that's not something that we can't control. That is something that only the creators can control. As I said before, the developers or the publishers of these entertainment media have control in the kinds of audiences they attract. They have the decision on what kind of demographic that they want the target. Yes, sometimes they might unintentionally invite other demographic, like how Young Justice attracts teenage girls or how My Little Pony attracts adult men, but you're still the one who gets to decide how your fictional entertainment should go and who will be the ones enjoying it. The biggest problem that the Western entertainment industry has right now is that there are way too many creators, developers, and publishers that try so hard to appeal to these people. Going back to that meme, do you know why those people 
people that say that they feel excluded can just enter into a fandom just as easily because these creators from the West make these entertainment media to be more inclusive to them and that leads into them excluding the original fans of that particular fandom and alienating them to leave. It happens in a lot of Western entertainment and they're trying to do this to Japanese entertainment as well. But as long as Japanese entertainment focuses more on appealing to its core demographic, as long as Japanese entertainment stays being as shameless as Uzaki-chan, even if the anime wasn't really that amazing, these people will always feel that they're excluded and they can only screech in the back as we enjoy these media in our own terms. Oh sure, they will keep on screeching, but it doesn't really matter when the media persists on making them that way. So I think we, as fans, should revise the strategy. If you truly want to gatekeep people from certain fandoms, the idea is to not tell the outrage mobs that they're not welcome here. The idea is to show them that they're not welcome here. Tell the creators to tell the outrage mobs that they're not welcome here. Or better yet, keep on making the things that these outrage mobs would feel excluded with. If the outrage mob gets offended with the display of appealing women, then tell these creators to keep on making them. Tell the creators to keep on making good products. And if those good products just so happen to offend the outrage mobs and make them feel excluded, Good, that's the point. Making them feel excluded is the best way of gatekeeping these toxic people out of fandoms. And what better way to make these people feel excluded than to keep on making the media that they don't like.